Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So I have already updated you about CSIR net exam which is going to happen most probably in the month of September and that is being called as CSIR June 2022 exam. So the registration has already started in the previous video I have like I have told you I have updated you that you can register through it and the basic process I have given you over there. In this video I'll tell you about important dates important things which actually you need to know before you register for this like eligibility age relaxation we'll also talk about the fees which you have to pay for it and then we will also talk about that what and when this exam is going to actually happen now uh, in the last video when i recorded uh, the information brochure was not being able to download like it was not like we were trying but it was not being able to download so in this video i will take uh, reference from the information brochure now I'll also show you that how you can download that. So this is the website uh, CSIR UGC net exam June 2022 website and here is the home section of it. You just have to come to this information section and here you can click on this information bulletin. Once you click on this you will be able to download the complete information bulletin in that eligibility criteria is also mentioned in that exam schedule is also mentioned. So everything is there in this information bulletin. So once you click on this you will be able to download a like a 5 or 6 MB uh, PDF file that will contain all the information. So I have already downloaded, I have already marked important things in that. So let me take you to that information brochure for the rest part of this video. All right. So this is a CSIR joint CSIR UGC net June 2022 information brochure. And uh, like this is the whole PDF which you will get. So let me just scroll down because these are all the basic things, uh, contents and all these things you don't need to like see. I'll only talk about important things just so that you get all the information in a single video. So here are important information and dates at a glance. Okay. So name of exam, you all know it's CSIR UGC net June 2022. That's what they are going to be like. They are going to call it. So they have skipped a December 2021 exam. Okay. This exam is not going to happen. The previous exam was June 2021. Now we have June 2022. So one exam is skipped. What is going to happen with it? We don't know. Let CSIR tell in future that what they are going to do or whether they have increased seat or not. These things are not cleared up still. Okay. So let's leave that part for now. Last date for successful transaction of the examination fees is 10th of August up till 11.50 PM. That is up till night 11.50. So this is till 10th of August. So you can fill the form till 10th, till 10th of August. Okay. Now uh, fees, as I have also mentioned in the previous video, also that if you belong to general category or EWS category, you have to pay 1,000 rupees. If you belong to uh, OBC NCL category, you have to pay 500 rupees. If you belong to SC or ST category, in that case, you have to pay 250 rupees. For third gender, you have to pay rupees 250 rupees uh, as the application fees. Whereas if you belong to PWD candidates, in that case, you don't have to pay any fees. So now let's look upon important dates. Okay. So these are important dates and tentative dates. So uh, the first thing is correction in the particular of the application form online only. So that means once the form is filled, let's say you made some mistake while filling the form. So you can make correction from 12th of August till 16th of August. So they will open the window to make certain uh, changes in that. Remember that some changes are not allowed like your a, your name, your date of birth, your father's name, your, your phone number. These things you cannot change while filling the form. Okay. So those things cannot be changed. Rest of the things like your educational qualification and other things. If you have made some mistake over there, then that you can like correct during this time. Then uh, downloading admit card that they have said that they will be announced like that will be announced later through the website. Mode of exam is computer based test, pattern of exam is multiple choice questions. You all know that duration of exam is 3 hours or 180 minutes. Date and schedule of the exam is not yet mentioned. So it's something which they will announce later on. Timing of exam is also going to be announced later on. So let's leave these parts. Center and date um, of the shift of the exam, they will mention in the admit card. So these things again, we don't know. Display of recorded response sheet. That is also not mentioned. So, so many things are not mentioned. They have just given you the date so that you can just start filling up the form. When they are going to conduct exam, they have not mentioned it. But if you refer to the tweet which they have made earlier, it is tentative that uh, the, the date of exam 
will be somewhere in the month of september 2020 okay so you will have your exam in the month of september we are expecting the exam in the mid of september okay so that's where we are expecting the exam to be and since they have given the dates to uh, like uh, from till uh, august so uh, till 10th of august uh, your uh, form filling is going to end so that means key you can have exam in the uh, early or mid of september okay so that's what we are expecting there is nothing official about it that's what that's what is my personal opinion about okay let's come a little down all the other informations are there how you can register and all the things are there if you want you can read them out i have highlighted the important things so i will just directly take you to that then about fellowship and all is given uh, for exam point of view uh, you all know that the fellowship is 31000 for the jrf candidate it will get increased to 35000 after 2 years of your research right so that is the thing okay let's talk about eligibility criteria so eligibility criteria let's talk about essential qualification so msc or equivalent degree is required integrated bsms students are also allowed a bsc 4 years degrees if bs 4 years degree if somebody has done or be or somebody has done btech or b pharma or mbbs if you have done any of these degrees with 55 percent marks or more than that without rounding off means it couldn't it should not be like 54.8 or 54.9 you should have 55 or more than that like 55.1 or 55.2 if you belong to general or ews or obc right if you belong to any of these candidates or any of these uh, like uh, category in that case you need 55 percent or more in any of these exams but in case if you belong to SCST uh, category or if you belong to third gender or if you are a person with disability in that case you only need 50 percent marks so five percent relaxation is given to you in the uh, in the perspective of your educational uh, qualification let's come a little down it says bsc honors or equivalent degree holders or students enrolled in integrated ms phd program uh, with at least 55 percent marks or greater okay this is or more uh, for general and so same thing okay so those who are in bsc honors or those who have uh, like those who have done equivalent degree or those uh, basically who are enrolled in integrated ms phd program so basically if you have done bsc honors and then uh, or, or if you are someone who has done who is enrolled in ms phd program in that case and you should have this 55 percent or more percentage if you belong to general and obc category and 50 percent or more in case if you belong to scst third gender or pwd category so in that case you are also eligible for that but remember one thing that you are eligible uh, for uh, you are only eligible for jrf you are not eligible for lecturership so if you are someone who is enrolled in ms phd or if you are someone uh, who has some equivalent degree with bsc honors or bsc honors in that case you can only apply uh, to this particular uh, like exam only uh, for the jrf candidate means you cannot apply for lecturership when you fill the form there are two options jrf only and one is uh, like uh, lecturership only so in that case you have to choose jrf only okay i'll explain that once i will tell you that how to fill the form in that video i'll explain you in detail let's come down a little bit so be bs btech b pharma mbbs final year and result awaited candidates are eligible to apply for fellowship only again fellowship means they are talking about jrf okay you are eligible for jrf only these candidates are not eligible for lecturership or assistant professor so in case if you belong to someone you can only be if you can only fill the form for jrf bsc honors student who are in final year or those whose result is awaited whose result is not uh, announced they are not eligible okay so make this thing very clear that if you are bsc honors student or if you are in bsc basically and your final year student you have your result is not announced in that case you cannot apply for it so you should have your result announced and if you have at least 55 percent or more in that case you can apply but only for jrf so i have just summarized everything because it becomes very uh, you know difficult to understand so i have summarized in three points if you are in msc or equivalent degrees whatever equivalent degrees are mentioned in this point if you are following any of them in that case you are uh, you are eligible for jrf as well as for ls it doesn't matter if you have qualified or if you are enrolled okay if you are in first year first semester any semester you are eligible for that then if you have done bsc honors or bsc 
with equivalent uh, or equivalent degree so equivalent degrees means uh, uh, like all the other degrees like be b tech and all the other ones and if you have passed it with this eligibility which is 55 percent or more uh, and 50 percent and more for the different categories in that case you are eligible but only for jrf okay you are only eligible for jrf and if you are only bsc like if you are a bsc student and if you are in final year or if your result is still awaited your result is not announced in that case you are not eligible okay one more thing is eligible that if you belong to be bs btech b pharma all these if you if you are any of these student and if you are in final year or result awaited also then also you are eligible for it so these candidates are eligible but bsc students are not eligible reason is that bsc is only three year program and uh, be bs btech all these are basically four year program so because of that they are eligible for it even if their result is awaited okay so this thing i have just made clear to you now let's talk about age limit upper age limit this is very important and this every one of you should know so csir has given age relaxation this time okay so in for jrf they are telling that if your maximum age is 28 years as on 1st of uh, july 2021 and upper age limit may be relaxable up to five years in case of scst and third gender and with uh, or for the pwd candidates and for female applicants okay and three years in the case of obc candidates and remember that your age they are not because the exam is happening in 2022 so usually this 28 years of age limit is applicable like it should be applicable till 2022 but they have just made it key if your age touches 28 years in 2021 uh, july of that in that case also you are eligible for it okay in that case also you can basically apply for uh, this particular exam so that is a good thing and uh, like we have done a lot of mails to csir we have done a lot of tweets to csir and finally they have uh, heard it and they made this decision i'm super happy i'm really very happy and this is something which we all have to welcome from csir they have given at least i think one year of age relaxation they have given in the upper age limit so that means ki if your date of birth lies after first uh, july okay 2000 uh, sorry first july 1993 okay so if your date of birth is after okay this or later okay so if your date of birth is after first july 1993 till like if your date of birth from there till like basically uh till first of july 2021 so whatever like this is the this is the gap or this is the range in which if your date of birth lies in that case your age will be less than 28 years 20, like less than 28 years so if your date of birth is on first of july 1993 in that case you will be exactly 28 years okay if your date is little bit like uh, one day also before that that means if you are on 30th june um, 1993 then your date of birth is 28 years and one day okay as per the date what they have given to you okay so like as per the relaxation what they have given to you so do let me know if any one of you if you if your day if your birthday lies on first of july 1993 or any like first of july people who are born on first of july are lucky for this time okay. let's come back to the other point so yeah there is a age relaxation and this is the range in which if your date of birth lies you are eligible for this next comes your uh, lecturership our assistant professor in that case there is no upper age limit any age whatever age you are having you can apply for it and you can basically uh, compete for that okay let's come for the mode of exam so the mode of exam is computer based test pattern of question is same uh, like you will be having 20 question in part a uh, out of those 20 you have to only do 15 of questions and each question will be of two marks negative marking will be of minus 0.5 then part b consists of 40 question out of 40 35 you have to do each question is of two marks again negative marking of 0.5 marks then part c consists of 60 question out of that 25 you have to do four marks each question negative marking of one marks each so the total number of questions will be 120 you only have to do 75 questions and the total marks which you are going to basically get will be 200 marks this is for chemistry for other subjects also if you want you can read out them so yeah these were important things subject code for chemistry is 701 
um yeah rest of the information are not that much relevant like like all the basic things are there how to fill the form and all the like all those things which are which we will discuss once we will fill the form and i will make a video on that uh, but for now for this video i just wanted to make give you a brief idea about age relaxation and and then we were also we also had to discuss about that what will be the tentative date of the exam so all these things were the things which i wanted to discuss in this video uh, that's all from my side thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one have a great day bye bye take care see you in the next video hey guys so i teach live on an academy plus platform here i teach for the csi or ugc net category and you can follow me over here for regular classes you can access my free classes as well as my paid classes on this particular platform the classes which are free you can get that under the section of special classes whereas in order to access my paid classes paid live classes you have to take an academy plus subscription so do make sure that you take the an academy plus subscription to access all my paid classes which are quite organized the whole syllabus is being completed over there and the classes are quite regular over there so make sure that you take an academy plus subscription by using my referral code that is n underscore huda that's it for this thank you so much